The floor is yours. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Max. Happy to be here. It's good to be here with you, Tom. I'm excited. I think it's the first time we're on stage, just the two of us, right? I think so. Hopefully not the last. <laughs> <laughs> and exciting to talk about what's going on here at Disneyland Paris. Yeah, super excited to tell you about our story. So, Disney Studios. we started with a video, right, that opened this event where Walt reminded us that to all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Tell me a little bit about how Walt's philosophies continue to guide us and every, all the work that you do. Sure. Well, Walt's original promise for Disneyland was that it would, in his own words, always be building and growing and adding new things. You know, with his motion pictures, he was often frustrated by the fact that once he released it to Technicolor to make the prints, he couldn't change it, and there were things he wanted to change. But Disneyland, by contrast, was something that could evolve and change with time. And we've certainly continued that promise of making changes to all our parks, including, of course, here at Disneyland Paris. Like adding a second gate, for example, right? Walt exactly. Disney Studios Park. Talk a little bit uh, about the evolution of that park. Sure. Well, the current Walt Disney Studios Park, which opened in 2002, was based on the interest and fascination with looking behind the scenes to see how motion pictures and television magic was created. And the park was built in a time period when that story wasn't really being told very broadly. So, but as you said earlier, things change and evolve. They sure do. And pretty soon there were television shows and DVD extras, remember DVDs, <laughs> magazines, and so much more that covered in really, really great depth that story. And so in turn, that story became less unique and in a sense less magical for our guests. You know, those making of stories have over time given way to more immersive adventures that keep the magic, well, magical. <laughs> So for our park, when, when do you think that that turning point came? I think Tower of Terror, you know, really departed from shows and sound stages boxes to an adventure in the story itself. It's obviously in incredibly immersive and thrilling. Um, and that was followed by Toy Story Playland, mm -hmm. where guests were immersed in an entire land dedicated to Toy Story and where you were given the sensation of shrinking down to toy size and experiencing the world from a, a fun new perspective. The world of Remy and Ratatouille came next, again, placing you in a scale adventure, being the size of Remy, and all of those projects, I think, led the way to the transformation that we're in now. So, earlier I mentioned that we're currently going through an unprecedented transformation and expansion of the Walt Disney Studios Park. And it's an expansion was going to roughly double the footprint of the existing park. That's right. And, but we also wanted to enrich the concept of a state or resort, making it a 360-degree experience thanks to two different and complementary mm. parks. That was our business objective. Right. So uh, tell us a little bit about how Imagineering translated that into storytelling. Okay. The original Disneyland story was based, as were many of the films that Walt Disney was creating at that time, on books. And the land themes of the park were based on kind of literary genres. So you had adventure stories, you had westerns, you had science fiction, and of course, fairy tales. And these iconic lands, which we still have today, were not based on a single story. Mm -hmm. They were rather based on a backdrop that could provide a service, a number of different stories in what we call at Imagineering our castle parks around the world. So a castle courtyard could become a portal to Peter Pan and Snow White, and Pinocchio, and other stories, or a western town could host a runaway mine train, or steamships, or even a haunted house. These thematic settings uh, continue to allow us to add new attractions and shows in the appropriate lands with amazing flexibility. Walt was very astute. Uh, I know that you've said many times that Disneyland Paris has the most beautiful castle park in the world. I have. Which to me is obvious, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think all of our castles around the world are beautiful and unique, but I'm biased. I think Disneyland Paris has the most beautiful castle we've ever created, right? <laughs> no contest. <laughs> 
So now, now let's talk about how the Studios Park is differentiated from the Castle Park, as you call it. Right. In our Studios Park, the original story structure wasn't based on literature, but obviously on motion pictures and TV shows in two distinct realms. The first is the world of Hollywood, with its famous Hollywood Boulevard and all of the theaters. And the second are the studios, the dream factories where the stories come to life within sound stages and backlot settings. And those settings provide a simple organization around the where and how it's done story could be told. In a studio or movie park, the castle is represented by the grand movie palaces or movie theaters. So the movie theater becomes the icon which represents that portal that takes you into the stories and worlds and the adventures of the imagination. Got it. Um, explain a little bit more than how this transforms the storytelling of our park. Okay. Well, today we are changing the story of the Walt Disney Studios Park. We're moving away from the how it's done sound stages to celebratory theaters and immersive worlds that will come to life all around you. Within the park, much of the placemaking will now take its cue from a beloved film or franchise, and these adventure worlds are going to become the focus of the park's new identity and appear as realms where our guests can discover deeply as they move throughout the park. There's, we know this, there's nothing better than fully immersing guests into another realm or world. Um, it's what we love to do here at Disneyland Paris. So yep. how is this, gonna, this new story going to be reflected in the organization of that park? Well, the park will be organized around two major themes, again, but this time, celebration and immersion. In the front of the park, we're going to focus on the celebration of Disney films and TV shows in their world premieres, on stage and in theatrical productions. And then in the second portion of the park, guests will be invited into and be completely immersed in fully realized worlds to participate in adventures that are inspired by our most beloved stories. So tell us about how the new story begins. Well, it begins <laughs> where all the stories of Disney begin, at the Walt Disney Studios. And when I say that, I mean all of the studios that are a part of Disney. Um, that piece of our story takes place in the familiar entry courtyard of our park, but no longer are we in the past. The time frame is now, it's contemporary, the music, the cast costumes, the graphics will all be contemporary, and we want all of you guests to know that right away that our story has changed. And where do we go from here? So, when a new film is completed, how does it get introduced in the world? It's most often done with a big Hollywood world premiere. You know, a celebration in a, in a movie theater in Hollywood with all the glitz and the glamour that a red carpet event can provide. And in our transformation of the current Studio One space, we are capturing the excitement of such a world premiere celebration. And with theatrical lighting and illusion, our Hollywood Boulevard will now be forever in that magical nighttime look of a world premiere. So it's not going to be anymore a soundstage where a movie is being filmed. That's right. And of course, no premiere would be complete without a classic garden party um, that would follow. And so ours is going to take place in a new, beautiful Hollywood Gardens restaurant where you can dine under the stars, like a star. And then just beyond that is our icon, the Grand Disney Movie Palace. And it will beckon you and transform you from Hollywood Boulevard out into our theater district to continue your adventure. So we're enormously proud of the theatrical productions in Walt Disney Studios Park, you know, from Mickey and the Magician to our more recent Together, a Pixar musical adventure. We know our guests really love our Broadway-style shows yeah. that offer, uh, you know, entertainment like nowhere else. So it's really one of the things that sets a visit to Disneyland Paris, you know, apart. They're, f they're fabulous. And these shows will now be anchored along a beautiful street with shade trees, um, inviting new kiosks, and we will bring this beautiful new world premiere plaza to life with bold graphics that celebrate the shows, as you might find if you were in Broadway in New York City or in the West End in London. I'm glad you mentioned the trees, uh, oh, because adding to. more lush landscaping to this part 
to this park. Is, it's a big part of the transformation, right? It is. I mean, who doesn't love trees? <laughs> um, with Avengers Campus, I think we added about 167 trees, and you're going to see incredible gardens and landscaping throughout the new expansion. I think we have over 112,000 trees and shrubs that we'll be planting. And that gives me a good transition to what I want to talk about next. From our theater district, our guests can travel down a new garden walk that features several distinct garden areas. First is Toy Story Garden, uh, inspired by the color and the fun of being in Andy's backyard. This will also give you a new access into Toy Story Playland. Next is a garden with a gazebo for live entertainment and character meet and greets and so much more. And then there's one of my favorites, which is the Tangled Garden, which features the Réponse Tangled Spin, where you can, under a beautiful night sky of lanterns, enjoy a new spin on a classic tale. But within each of these gardens, beautiful flowers and landscaping will offer a colorful path that will take you all the way down to Adventure Bay, which is our brand new 70,000 cubic meter water body. Which is going to be able to host a variety of entertainment offerings. Absolutely. So Adventure Bay becomes a new type of hub for this park, right? That's and right. It's going to absolutely change the entire look and feel of the park. It will. And as fitting for this new hub, we have our premium dining experience, the Regal View Restaurant and Lounge. And this will be the perfect spot for fine dining and drinks, along with a chance to meet some of your favorite princesses. I'm sure most of you in the audience have seen the amazing construction that's taking place in this area of the park. Let's take a look at some of the recently captured footage of our construction. Exciting. <laughs> Exciting. So Adventure Bay is going to be the future heart of the park with right. wonderful entertainment possibilities. And of course, across the water is going to be our next immersive world. That's right. Arendelle and the world of Frozen is coming to life across the bay and will feature our classic Frozen Ever After adventure, a chance to meet Anna and Elsa in a very royal setting, um, dining at the Two Crowns Tavern, shopping, and very, very special entertainment. I mean, this project is a huge undertaking. The North Mountain alone will have some 400 tons of steel inside. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. We're absolutely thrilled with the reaction our guests have had with Avengers Campus, which was our first major expansion land in this transformation. And now we know they're going to be even more thrilled with this new world of Frozen. This new area of the park is going to be you know, designed with expansion in mind for the future. Yes, there's a lot of room to grow in our future, and our Imagineering team right now is at work on the next immersive world. You know, Walt Disney said Disneyland will never be completed, and I think we're proving that that philosophy applies to this park as well. In fact, by the time we complete all of our work, more than 90% of the park will have been transformed. Quite That's, a bit. It's amazing. So thank you, Tom. I'm so glad that you were able to join us today at such a special time and share with our audience the storytelling of both this park and our Disneyland park. With its new creative vision, we know that uh, this park will hold a unique position in our resort. It is the most ambitious, 
symbolic expansion program since its opening in 2002. And for all these reasons, this park is going to feel brand new. So talking about new, let's have one last look at a change we'll be making once World of Frozen will open its gates. Thanks for watching this video. Please consider to support us with a super thanks. This allows us to make more fun videos in the future for your enjoyment. Your support is highly appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to give us a like on this video. Have a magical day.